so human and computer interaction the learners will develop understanding of principles and models of human computer interaction they will evaluate existing hci design and principles and use this to uh, use this to help them plan their own prototype user interface the lo1 is principles of hci hci critic interface design using principles of hci evaluate user interaction when using different it applications so the topics would be the like origin of hci so hci is the human computer interaction yeah okay yeah and uh, some theories user interface design and uh, their styles yeah okay yeah so let us see what is hci hci is the study and practice of usability like you know that how you would use and usable how the things would be usable especially the computer usable in a sense that uh, whether it would be easy to use or whether it would be difficult to use it is about understanding and creating a software and other technology that people will use use uh, use i uh, want to use will be able to use and will find effective when used okay? okay yeah so everything they want to do something with it and should be an effective hci is the study of how people use computer system to perform certain tasks hci tries to provide us with all understanding of computer and the person using it so is to make the interaction between them more effective and more enjoyable yeah yeah okay yeah this main purpose yeah, yeah, yeah. for example you know if you have a computer game in front of you and that's very difficult to operate would you enjoy it uh no you would you just wouldn't want to play it would you if you can't use it very well yeah right so basically and even if you have for example if everyone uses the smartphone and uses the apps and just after clicking you know they are happy to do anything on mobile or computing even because those apps are easy to use if those apps are not easy to use we won't use it isn't no. it no yeah absolutely yeah you if if you come across an app and it's difficult to use you tend to just uninstall it don't you yeah yeah even um, that, even if even if you are you know uh, you are done with but at some stage you uh, you know you find an alternative one yeah that, yeah yeah that's it yeah it's, and it's quite easy to find an alternative isn't it depends you know what context you are so yeah yeah yeah, yeah hci concerns process so process is basically you design it you evaluate it and implement it that how you are really making an interconnection between human and computer so the process is the concerns another concern is that they are on interactive computing systems for human use so they have a concern plus the study of major phenomena surrounding them okay so these are the concerns on hci the hci concerns process on plus goal of hci ensuring usability a usable software system is the one that supports the effective and efficient completion of tasks in a given work context it's simple because if you did a successful task then you are done yeah so it says yeah. and that in 1999 yeah yeah the bottom line benefits of more usable software system to business users include increased productivity decrease user training time and cost do you agree yeah definitely increased user errors increased accuracy of data input and data interpretation decrease need for ongoing technical support yeah so yeah. that's basically the goal of hci yeah the bottom yeah. line benefit of usability to development organization include the two organizations now yeah yeah greater profits due to more competitive product services decreased overall development and maintenance costs decreased customer support 
cost more follow on business due to satisfied customers not to use the term user friendly which intends to mean a system with high usability but always misinterpreted to mean tidying up the screen displays to make it more pleasing okay to achieve usability the design of the user interface to any interface product needs to take into account and be tailored around the number of factors including cognitive perceptual motor capabilities and constraints of people in general so cognitive is you know uh, the how your mind is thinking perceptual is that how you make an idea of anything yeah and how yeah. you write those capabilities yeah, uh, yeah in general special and unique characteristics of the intended user population in particular so what they really intend yeah unique yeah. characteristics of the user physical and social work environment unique characteristics and requirements of user tasks which are being supported by the software unique capabilities and constraints of the chosen software and our hardware platform for the product so they have to make it kind of you know a uh, unique yeah yeah okay yeah the hci is as for human good at obviously sensing low level stimuli stimuli is the input and uh, pattern recognition in, uh, inductive reasoning multiple strategies adapting hard and fuzzy things so stimuli is kind of you know for example if a human smiles in front of someone yeah yeah then then it's it would be a big you know uh, input isn't it yeah uh, yeah absolutely yeah like you know if you say to your boss i need you know two months holiday <laughs> yeah. and in front of you know him or her where if she smiles then it means your half application is granted yeah i i don't, I, I don't think i'd be that lucky to do that <laughs> but you know if she is you know uh looking at you out of anger then you can understand so it's a kind of sensing low level stimuli yeah yeah i could probably do one month but not two um, yeah i understand but the my concern is that the human sensation is is works at very low level yeah like you know just her smile you know single smile would be the answer yeah okay i the computer is good at continuing and measuring accurate storage and recall rapid and consistent responses data processing calculation repeated questions performance over time simple and sharply defined things i yeah list of skills is somewhat complementary let humans do what humans do best and computers do what computers do best so interaction yeah how yeah. either of them would have which skills would be kind of interrelated and interaction could be made in between yeah yeah okay origin of hci the hci is an area of research and practice that emerged in in the early 90 1980s initially as a specified area in computer science embracing cognitive science and human factors engineering yeah cognitive science is basically the a kind of area study of ai ai is the artificial intelligence okay right so you know what is artificial intelligence yeah it's well it's where the computers attempt to think uh for themselves like you know the basically there is no specific definition of ai that we learned in you know 20 years ago however the ai could be defined in different ways yeah okay okay so artificial intelligence for example is in the defi- one of the definition may be to making the machines you know to work like human yeah okay 
And the cognitive science is the study of thought, learning, and mental organization, which draws on aspects of psychology, linguistic philosophy, and computer modeling. So the way the mental and the human brain works is a kind of, you know, a mechanism, a cognitive science. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Where HCI came from until late 1970, the only humans who interacted with the computers were information technology professionals and dedicated hobbyists. Personal computing, including both personal software and personal computing uh, platforms, made everyone in the world a potential computer user. So, initially, only the computer professionals were the users. They were aware about the usage of the computer however later on everyone became the computer isn't it yeah yeah absolutely yeah like you know even our little you know uh, 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 kids even my seven months old you know uh, a baby she tries to put the fingers on the screen and every time she changes you know uh, the functions yeah yeah okay yeah and vividly uh, highlighted the deficiencies of the computers with respect to the usability for those who want to use computers as a tool. So, uh, one of the tablets and the small mobile phones, they have now become a tool, you know, for, yeah. for the kids to make them happy when they are crying. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. Yeah? So, yeah. that's basically the human-computer interaction the every user has become it has become the need of you know uh, uh, to use the these tools computing devices and the HCI plays an important role yeah yeah okay like you know if it was the desktop computer and uh, you know connected with the wires and we were unable to hand over to our small kids yeah yeah but if it is in the tablet form, and even if it is charged, no cable is connected, and uh, Wi-Fi is connected, you can easily and quickly play, play the cartoons, then, you know, it's a kind of human-computer interaction. Yeah? yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. Now, perception. Perception in HCI is, uh, is what allows the user to see and feel when using a human-computer interface. Yeah? Yeah. When you when you are using the computer, you are doing through perception. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In order to understand and allow the users to see and feel, designers use colors, patterns, and objects. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, if you want the user to perceive, yeah, for example, to perceive this. Uh, PowerPoint slide, yeah? Yeah. Designers would use the color, for example, the white color behind this, uh, the background of this uh, PPT slide is good. Pattern, pattern may be like, you know, the top would be the, you know, title and the uh, main body would be the uh, details. Yeah, okay, yeah. Objects, certain objects, Maybe, you know, there is no any picture, but like uh, this, a bold, uh, you know, is a, a kind of object. This is another object, like a different fonts are the objects. Make sense? Yeah, yeah. So you are basically creating the perception for the user. Yeah, okay, yeah. Using these, you know, things. Attention. Attention is the process of selecting things to concentrate on it a point in time from the range of possibilities available from the range of poss uh, from the range of possibilities available yeah okay yeah so what possibilities i have for example i have a possibility uh, to click on this yeah yeah make sense yeah yeah so absolutely. they they give an attention to me, like, you know, these, they are different, you know, options here, yeah? Yeah. Uh, selecting things to concentrate on, yeah? So, all this make, you know, a kind of attention thing, is it? Isn't it? Yeah, yeah, to try, to try and uh, draw, the, draw the person's attention to it. 
Yeah. Try, try and make them potentially click something. Yeah. Okay. So sometimes you know free offer buy you know free buy one get one now they give in kind of attention. Yeah. 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 Or yeah. C um. C click click here for you know discount codes yeah. or something. Yeah. But always, you know, we look for the buy one, get one free. Yeah, yeah, absolutely, yeah. And buy now, pay after 10 years is is the best option, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I don't do that, though. Yeah. Okay, now, Norman's theory of interaction. Uh, Donald Norman is uh, deservedly considered to be the one of the great uh, one of the greats of usability design. He, you know, spent his life on usability design. Yeah? Okay, yeah. Perhaps, you know, he suffered a lot and uh, in the, within the inspiration, you know, he did lots of things in usability design. He is founder of the uh, Nelson Norman Group and he is also the former professor of cognitive science. In short, he is a guy who has spent his whole life researching what makes user tick and how to make products that they find to be ultimately usable and and pleasurable yeah yeah possibly he did have very bad experiences in his life yeah and he, that's why he he you know did research in you know doing this yeah okay not sure maybe yeah yeah <laughs> so now next is uh hike Hyman response selection law. There is often a temptation to provide users with the number of options at options all at once, but research suggests that the number of possible selections can slow users down. This problem was identified by the British uh, psychologist William Hick and Ray Hyman in 1951 after carrying out a series of experiments to access to assess cognitive information capacity. The Hick Hyman law has been applied in human computer interaction to highlight the importance of reducing the number of possible choices presented to users at any one time. It, it suggests there is a linear relationship between the number of options presented and subsequent choice reaction times. The so selection speed would be slower with very extra items. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you, if, Can you give me an example? Um, if you um, if you had a website where there were too many options um, in in one page, it might slow down the user in you know what they're going to select to buy. Yeah. So if you if you only give the users a few options at once, yeah. they're more likely. To, so if they've only got say three options. Yeah, they're more likely to choose one rather than having, say, six. Yeah. Uh, or, or nine. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, like you know, uh, they have pro been you know introducing like iPhone six, iPhone six S, iPhone six. Yeah. And many things, you know, they have made it confused. Uh, confused. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Highman, uh, Highman response says that please don't you know do this. Yeah. Yeah. Keep keep it simple. Yeah. Yeah. So it's about further. Next slide is about you know the uh, his law and okay. the response selection law. So basically, lots of theoretical background. All is the theoretical stuff. So let me go ahead to the next slide. Is it okay? Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Now next is the Fitz law. Okay. The Fitz law <laughs> says that the amount of the time required for a person to move a pointer, for example, mouse cursor. So a target area is a function of distance to the target divided by the size of the target. Thus, longer the distance and the smaller the target size, the longer it takes. Okay, yeah. The longer the distance and the smaller the target size, longer it takes. Longer it takes, yeah, okay. Light, you know, uh, for example, here is the uh, 
for example, I need to find, you know, the my computer here, this PC. Yeah. Yeah. I, I tried to find from here and found it. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, you know, uh, if the Google Chrome, the size of the icon of the Google Chrome was bigger, yeah, then I could quickly, you know, go to, you know, the Google icon. Yeah. 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 So that's basically his theory. So he says that, you know, if you, uh, if you try to reduce the size, then, you know, it would be longer for the response. Yeah. Like yeah. on the, uh, for example, check MOT of a car. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Now you see that, you know, uh, no matter there are lots of text, you know, but they have given a bigger, you know, button here. Yeah. Like, you know, after putting the vehicle registration and, you know, if it's here, you know, fine. But, you know, looking for a HGV trailer history, then, you know, you would take a bit longer, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So even this could be like a continue button would have been bigger then you know you would already know that the, the the continue button is you know very easy to catch yeah 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 so thanks to fit's law yeah okay yeah. now designing universal user interfaces so universal interfaces are basically you know the uh, is the design of user interface for machines, software such as computers, home appliances, mobile devices, and other electronic devices with the focus on maximizing usability and user experience. The goal of user interface is to make user interaction. So universal user interface is basically that, for example, everyone is, you know, aware with the mobile phone, aware with the computer yeah 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 and uh, if the menu screen of the washing machine yeah, yeah is designed in a kind of similar way then it would be helpful but most of the time you know some of the options are you know very difficult to understand on the washing machine dishwashers and you know sometimes the uh, microwaves. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Do you agree? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's um, it, it's weird, and I, I wish they could bring out like a, a little screen. Yeah. On them where you can like, tap the options. You'd you'd think they'd have done that by now. Do you agree that sometimes you know some of the washing machines are different to operate, difficult to operate? Some of the digital, you know, microwaves they have a different timings, and you know the. Uh, yeah, even, they are. Yeah. Uh, dishwashers, they have a different options. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So there is a. So you understand well what is meant by designing a universal user interface. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. So in the same way, you know that, uh, like you know the government website, dot gov, that if you would go through the any of the department, yeah, then the way a universal layout would be same like a continue and button and an input fields would be similar have you tried yeah. you must have tried this website you know the government website for different things yeah 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 I've, yeah i've um i actually yeah i looked up this course actually on there it's this course is on there uh what what uh th this this um this qualification is on there on the on the government website uh, is there, you mean the UK university or the general course? Ah, uh, the gen the general course. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, for example, this is the let's say the vehicle DVLA, DVLA related with the DVLA. If you would go through the check my NI contributions. Yeah. 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 Then see, it's again same. You have the same user interface. Yeah. You put yeah, your yeah. name and ID and password. So everything they have made a kind of, you know, the universal, uh, you know, user interface. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's the point behind that you need to create a uh, universal user interface. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. A few more uh, bits on this. Next is 
interfaces that support collaboration yeah, yeah. multi user interfaces are said to be to provide natural interaction in supporting collaboration yeah, yeah. so collaboration is basically the uh, integrating different options at one interface okay like maybe you know if when you play a game yeah and uh, sometimes one user plays but sometimes you know the two users can play on the one screen isn't it mm, yeah 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 so and sometimes you know for example uh like if you have an order and you can see the order history here on the right sometimes you can see yeah. your basket you know on the right yeah so yeah. a kind of collaboration is basically the talk about the interfaces which support the collaboration mm. yeah so you need to understand do you need a collaborative you know interfaces and how they make it how to make it obviously yeah. depends on the application to application yeah but yeah. there is the need of the collaborative interfaces yeah yeah absolutely yeah supporting different interaction styles yeah so interaction styles basically you know that how you interact with uh, you know uh, different styles so two trends related the collaboration and communication are fostering use, uh, useful new conceptions of human computer interfaces first evolving theories of interpersonal collaboration and yeah. uh, communicating uh, this for example series of second is increasing use of well this this slide is not important let me you know uh, come to the different interaction styles in the next slides then we will discuss over there right yeah okay yeah which is the next uh, to next topic the different interaction styles but let me tell you the uh, interaction styles is basically sometimes you use the a kind of command prompt yeah sometimes hmm. you use a form sometimes you use a just button so these are basically the interaction styles yeah okay yeah. so let me uh, you know uh, explain the different interaction styles after two three slides so next is complex interfaces yeah? yeah so when when it comes to talk about the interface the complex interface are those kind of interfaces that are difficult to understand by the user yeah these in, uh, interfaces uh, these interfaces have complex designs yeah yeah one of the point in designing of interface is that is the uh, is that it should not be it should not be complex yeah yeah it should easily understandable by all kind of users yeah. yeah this is very important while we design the interface of our application we should keep all users in mind while designing the interface yeah so yeah. you never make any complex interface at all mm. yeah like the, there's a kind of advice and you understand that if the interface would be containing the many things and they would be they would not be user user friendly then that would be considered as complex interface isn't it y yeah so you try to avoid it yeah yeah absolutely next is certain we are on the topic of user interface design rules so eight golden rules from shindier men shindier men's eight golden rules yeah okay yeah so this you know researcher says that uh, you should you know consider for the consistency consistency is like you know 
by utilizing familiar icons, colors, menu, hierarchy. Make sense? Yeah. Like, you know, it shouldn't be the case that, you know, for example, like on the desktop, you know, a few of the icons are very big and some of them are very small. Yeah. Yeah. So the this, you know, researcher has given certain eight rules for the interface design. Next, he says that enable frequent users to use shortcuts. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Like yeah. shortcuts, you know, control C, control V is one of the, you know, shortcuts, but probably within the software, there could be more. Yeah. 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 The offer an informative feedback, like if anything, anything, you know, uh, went wrong, then the feedback should have been informative. Yeah. Mm. Design dialogue to yield Kiloya, offer simple or error, simple error handling, permit easy reversal of action, support internal local and locus of control, reduce short term memory load. So these are, you know, further explained like what is consistency like these, you know, icons and similarity, shortcuts, informative feedback and, uh, you know, the, these are the self -explanatory, explanatory kind of and uh, unfortunately the time is short so we cannot you know discuss each and everything in detail but i hope you should not have any problem while you would revise it isn't it yeah that's fine yeah i understand yeah nelson's heuristic jacob nelson's heuristics are probably the most used usability heuristic for user interface design nelson developed the heuristic based on work together with the Rolf Molich in 1990, the final set of heuristics that are still used today were released by Nelson in 1994. The, heuristic, the heuristics is basically the, again, a kind of, uh, let me tell you, related with the AI, that how the process, you know, uh, what is the mechanism behind behind the process? Heuristic techniques is approach of problem solving that okay. implies a you know practical method, yeah, a kind of you know the. Uh, basically, the how we give methods to a solution. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Itself, it's a you know the process or method. Yeah. Yeah. But it's a study and use use of heuristic is a heuristic technique is basically the any approach for problem solving. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah. And this term is mostly, you know, used in the uh, AI. Yeah, okay. Yeah, like, you know, mm -hmm. the cognitive science, yeah, heuristic approach, and these things, you know, uh, are the keywords of this, you know, uh, related with this subject. And obviously, HCI is kind of, you know, uh, the, uh, the uh, study of, you know, AI. Yeah? Yeah, okay. So what are the methods or heuristics given by Nelson? So Jacobs, Nelson's 10 general principles for the interaction design, they are called the heuristic, heuristics because they are a broad rules of thumb and not specific usability guidelines. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. heuristic, 10 usability heuristics for user interface design. So it says visibility of the system status. So the system should always keep user informed about what's going on through appropriate feedback within the reasonable time. Like, you know, if you are, if you have, uh, you know, an application process, then it can clearly say that 
you are on the application detail then you are on the declaration page then you need to pay you know and like you know number of steps the status of the system is needs to be you know in front of you yeah okay do you understand this that most of the time the status is visible and you are happy and if it is not then you are worried yeah absolutely yeah yeah, yeah. and match, match between the system and the real world that's a user yeah, and, uh, yeah? user yeah. control and freedom freedom is like you know that whether the user is strict strictly on particular page or can free, freely move to others yeah consistency and standards error prevention recognition rather than a recall flexibility and efficiency of use aesthetic and minimalist design help users recognize diagnose and recover from errors help and documentation yeah so i'm sorry yeah. you know we cannot go through you know all of them one by one but you know the context of this you know uh, heuristics the methodologies ideas that how the things should be you know in a well uh, you know heuristic manner should be you know uh, the context should be clear to you is it yeah yeah i get the basics yeah yeah basics are there and so here is the link already and uh, this these you know the are the terms from indicative content so not only this this you know particular url but these rules you know are pub available on you know lots of websites that what is meant by the nelson's heuristics yeah okay okay so i tried you know uh, to add the every law inside the ppt slides but it was difficult to complete you know in a one lo and one session yeah yeah i understand that's fine yeah so that's why i thought you know that the only the best way is that i should mention a link and give a quick you know link to and brief review to the it yeah yeah that's that's good uh, that's good because it saves me having to find a link so yeah. that's, that, it makes sense to do it that way yeah and even obviously there's a little risk that the the link could be you know expired yeah but, that's fine that's right yeah, but these them. are you know the kind of theories so they exist anywhere yeah okay now it's here uh, interaction styles yeah like i said previously uh, i skipped the topic and uh, so styles let us discuss the it's here uh, interaction styles yeah mm so interaction styles are basically like command language yeah you remember it used to be you know a kind uh, i showed you the like uh, in linux you write on the you know small in the plain text yeah 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 i use the cmd as well yeah so that's basically is one of the you know interaction style yeah yeah it has advantages and disadvantages as well like these it's flexible appeals to expert users supports creation of users defined scripts or macros is suitable for interacting with the network computers even with a low bandwidth this is advantage retention of the command is generally very poor learnability of command is very poor error rate is very high yeah too too much errors isn't it yeah definitely yeah you could unless you type all those commands in every day you're going to forget aren't you yeah form filling yeah like you yeah. know you have a form instead of you know you use the cursor based programs but you simply click on this and you you are done yeah advantages like simplifies data entry shortens learning blah 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 disadvantages consumes screen space yeah never bother isn't it yeah absolutely yeah menus menu selection advantages disadvantage direct manipulation like a central theme interface design you just you know click drag and drop yeah yeah that's kind of direct you know uh, manipulation so it was about you know the interaction styles yeah, yeah. okay yeah and maybe i'm not sure you know maybe after 10 years you only move your eyes and 
the interaction style is uh, style is would be the one of the i i interaction yeah maybe yeah now the interaction design process is basically the goal directed problem solving in activity in found by the intended user target domain materials cost and feasibility so hcr design it's a how you would design basically it's a process okay hci design human computer interaction design what is that basically that's a process yeah it's a goal directed and creative activities involved decision making activity to balance trade offs requirements of a product compatibility and ease of use may be contradicting it's a representation is a plan for development is a set of alternative and successive elaborations so design is a process that involves these things make sense okay. yeah okay yeah like you plan you set an alternatives there is some decision making into the design yeah a yeah. creative activity is there yeah yeah so four basic activities of interaction design there's a process identify the needs and establishing requirements that's a one of the activity that okay. if you want to make a hci design it would its process would be to identify the needs make sense yeah absolutely yeah the second is develop an alternative design you should have a normal design as well as you know the alternative design as well make sense mm yeah build interactive versions of the designs yeah okay yeah. so not necessarily build a software version other possible simple prototypes include paper based storyboards wood etc yeah okay yeah so other yeah. In- interactive versions like you know that you come up with a any idea no matter if it is a hardware the actual software design but anything which has to be given an interface you come up with the versions like you know uh, when making uh, you know for example if you said that this is a kind of banking application yeah then the balance could be shown you know on the left side the balance could be shown on the right left hand side yeah and uh, the other menus pay transfer could be in the bottom and the pay transfer could be in the top like different banks have a different you know uh ideas isn't it yeah okay yeah yeah so it really depends how you want to make it yeah yeah okay yeah it, yeah okay it's different different yeah. for each one isn't it yeah yeah evaluating design determine the usability and acceptability acceptability of a product or design so you need to determine that whether the design is usable and accept, uh, acceptable or not okay for example most of the time you know if you which do you use hotmail sometimes yeah i do yeah yeah so over the passage of time sometimes they suddenly say this is a new look yeah and yeah. Uh, you know do you like if you like it you keep it otherwise you keep it on the classic you know look mm you know it yeah and then eventually they force you to do go with a new look don't they yeah yeah so yeah, determine so the usability and acceptability of a product or design possibly you know they must have observed that you know the people want to change to the new design let's mm. say person want to you know uh, go to the new design and if they knew that for example uh, more than 60% wanted to remain Mm. Yeah. So yeah. they would have, you know, uh, uh, an idea that what they need to do, obviously. So that's the point behind. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So that's the logic behind. And uh, now, sorry. Now then is the user analysis yeah okay yeah 
Different people have different requirements with respect to computer interfaces. Analyze different differences of potential user groups. So identify the group, uh, user group, primary, secondary, and uh, border cases. Prioritize important user groups. Yeah, for example, online driving, travel booking system, employee at a travel agency that books multiple flights per day, and a businesswoman that wants to change flights during a business trip, teacher that needs to organize a class outing trip. So every user needs to be analyzed. Okay. Yeah. Like it shouldn't be the case that uh, you assume that, you know, for example, the travel agent is very, very confident to find an airline and the package. And as for example, if a lady went on a holidays and wanted to change the, you know, uh, date or anything, yeah, then you should keep in mind that her experience could be different from the travel agent, isn't it? Yeah, definitely, yeah. So user analysis is important, yeah? Okay, yeah. Evaluating interfaces against requirements. So uh, evaluating, you understand and remember what is the evaluation? That was, that, was that lo looking at the uh, the different ways to do it? No. Evaluation is that checking the system you have, yeah, again against what was required. Right. Okay. Make sense? Yeah. So checking the system you have against the requirements, like it says, what requirements are of a software requirement analysis test will give it. The task is to design interface according to requirements that we gather in all stages. Interface should meet the requirements that we gather. Yeah. Okay. So we need to look at and assess whether what was the requirement. For example, the requirement was that uh, the system is needs to be developed for a computer operators. They already know that how to use the computer. Yeah, yeah okay. and it gave them very easy, you know, system. Yeah. yeah. I mean, the conventional system, the normal system. And for yeah. example, if the users were, you know, very new, then probably you gave them a software which was uh, on a full screen and only limited number of icons, you know, were provided to them. And they, they were, you know, uh, happy to use it. And uh, if their requirement was fulfilled, it means you are done and you evaluated, you assess the requirement and uh, you have done well. That's about the evaluation, yeah? Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So that's it. It was about the LO1 and uh, some of the things were di discussed in detail and some of them were, you know, given a touch. So you can always go through the slides and the links. I hope you would find it, you know, easy as well as interesting. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah, yeah. okay, yeah. yeah. So let us uh, finish the session. Uh, session. And yeah. uh, should I see you tomorrow as well? Yeah, definitely, yeah. Yeah, definitely. So we try to have, you know, uh, like, you know, tomorrow on the Friday. Yeah. Be or two and we try to make the Saturday as well and yeah. uh, let's you know uh, say that uh, all sessions have been completed by the end of 2018 yeah, yeah that yeah? would be good yeah that would be good uh, you know practically and literally as well yeah 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 definitely okay that's fine so okay. I see you tomorrow 7 p.m yeah yeah see you then all thanks bye, bye.